नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वंस अगेन आई एम हियर द टॉपिक दैट आई एम गोइंग टू टेक अप टुडे इज पैराग्राफ राइटिंग स्टूडेंट्स आई एम श्योर यू ऑल आर अवेयर ऑफ द टर्म पैराग्राफ यू ऑल हैव बीन राइटिंग पैराग्राफ्स एंड एसेज एबिलिटी टू राइट अ गुड एसे डिपेंड्स ऑन योर एबिलिटी टू राइट अ गुड पैराग्राफ टुडे after my lecture you will understand what is a paragraph how to write a good paragraph an effective paragraph what to do and what not to do students remember that paragraph writing is not limited to your foundation class you have to write essays letters you all will be appearing for your competitive exams and you have to write paragraphs so if once you learn the basic structure of a paragraph once you know how to write a very good and effective paragraph it is going to help you to improve your writing everywhere as i said after completing this lesson you will learn to do the following you will know what is a paragraph you will be able to define a paragraph and write an effective good paragraph what is a paragraph a series of sentences a group of sentences in which you develop one topic number of sentences which are linked together which are focused only on one idea one concept one theme one topic that is termed as a paragraph a paragraph is a coherent whole well organized it gives you information about a topic and it develops one idea students remember stick to this principle that one paragraph means one idea one theme one subject one topic the paragraph you may compare a paragraph just like you have the building blocks yes the building blocks they help you to build a document similarly paragraphs help you to build your document if you're writing essays reports letters even if you're writing your answer your dissertation your thesis you have to construct paragraphs so students be very careful about what you put into each paragraph and where you break up your text what is the use of a paragraph it helps you to present an idea in a concise brief well thought out manner it helps you to describe a person place or an event and of course you may write a paragraph to express some idea some reflection or some thought reasons to write a paragraph may be plenty i've put in a few examples for you over here to describe to tell a story to explain or to persuade the purpose for writing a paragraph may again be many are you writing to convince inform entertain or simply to share your feelings look at the screen students when you write with a pencil if the pencil is so small is it possible to write or if it is too long it is difficult to hold the pencil isn't it so you have to be careful regarding the length of your paragraph if your paragraph is too short it is uneven it tends to be disconnected the reader who is reading your paragraph will not understand what are you trying to say because there is no linking it is too short there are there are missing links in it and if your paragraph is too long then you tend to lose the main point the focus is missing so see to it the length of the paragraph should be appropriate as per the topic you have taken up your paragraph needs to be focused yes 
totally attentive to the topic that you have taken up. Be very specific. Don't digress from the topic. And concise, brief, to the point. Think carefully. Once you have decided the topic on which you have to write a paragraph, you have lots of ideas in your mind. Try to focus, organize those ideas in a very systematic, logical sequence. Take the important ones first. See to it that there is no repetition when you are writing the paragraph. A paragraph always has a beginning, middle and an end. Students, let me remind you, at your school level and other time also, you have been writing essays. Yes, and you have been reading that an essay has a beginning, a middle and an end. Similarly, even a paragraph has a beginning, middle and an end. But it is different from an essay. You have to be very, very careful when you write the paragraph. See, when you are writing an essay, it gives you a lot of scope. You can express the same idea in a different ways, using different examples, different illustrations. But paragraph is not giving you that scope. The length of the paragraph is limited. So you need to be very, very focused. You have to be very, very careful. For writing a paragraph, I am going to come up certain tips. Use your thesaurus, use your dictionary. What are the basic components of a good paragraph? And students, if you remember these parts, these components, these basic elements of a paragraph writing, you will always be able to write very good paragraphs. Look at the screen. An indented first line. I took it up earlier also when we were writing letters. Indented first line means when you have to leave a little space when you begin your paragraph. The first line needs to be indented. Indented means means leave at least little space, almost equal to one finger. If you are typing your paragraph on your laptop or on your computer, then you may leave one tab, which is equal to five spaces. That tells you that a paragraph begins here. If you are writing a long document and suppose there are 10 to 12 paragraphs, the reader should know where you are starting a new paragraph. So you need to have an indented line of the paragraph and suppose you are not using an indented line then what you can do is you can skip a line second important component of a good paragraph is a topic sentence you understand the term topic isn't it topic the topic that you have decided to take up the topic sentence means the thesis statement the topical sentence that introduces the subject of your paragraph. This is followed by your supporting sentences. And as I have written there, at least three supporting evidences. Be very careful students. Please do not make paragraphs of just three sentences. When you have three supporting sentences, it means you have a topic sentence, three supporting sentences and a concluding sentence. So not less than five sentences. Your supporting sentences are followed by the concluding sentence. And another good component, very important component of a good paragraph is the transition words. How to move on from one sentence to the other. How to bring about a link. How to relate one sentence to the other. How to relate one paragraph to the other. I am going to take up all these five points in detail. The basic structure, I have given you a figure over here students, if you remember this figure, you will always remember how to begin with your paragraph writing. On the top, you have your topic sentence. See the word topic, if you remember the word topic, you will always remember that first sentence has to be the topic sentence. Then you have supporting details, minimum three. Supporting details, they are supporting sentences. Sentences that support your topic. And finally, you have your concluding sentence. 
See, when you're writing an essay, you have a conclusion. One full paragraph is there. But when you're writing just one paragraph, one sentence is going to be your concluding sentence. The first point, the topic sentence. How do you define a topic sentence? What is the topic sentence? A topic sentence comes at the beginning of a paragraph. Usually the first sentence. Jab aap likhte hai paragraph, uska jo pehla vaakye hota hai, usse hum kya kehte hai? Topic sentence. And it states what? The main idea, the topic, theme or the subject. Aapke saamne map hai? Yes, it helps you, it guides you, isn't it? Similarly, the topic sentence helps to generate the interest. The statement that you have given at the beginning of the paragraph is like a road map for your audience. What is the map doing? It tells you what is going to come next, isn't it? So, topic sentence in a way is an indication. It is a guide to tell you what is going to be followed in the paragraph. It tells the reader what the paragraph will be about. A good topic sentence does two things. It names a subject. It introduces an overall idea that you wish to discuss later in the paragraph. So you understood topic sentence? I hope it is clear to all of you. Topic sentence related to the topic. It is the first sentence. It always begins with an indented line. It opens up your paragraph. It gives a peep what is going to follow. It is like a road map. The topic sentence presents your main idea in one complete sentence. And students, sometimes the topic that is given to you is such in which you have to take a stand. You have to take a position whether you are in favor of the topic or against the topic. So the very first sentence should make it very clear what is your position on the topic. The topic sentence or the main idea is developed or explained by other details in the sentences. See the figure? At the top is the topic sentence which gives the main idea. Then you have a number of supporting sentences followed by the concluding sentence. So whichever figure you remember students, remember that always in your mind when you are constructing paragraphs because then your paragraphs are going to be absolutely fit, logical, with coherence, with perfect unity, perfectly polished. The supporting sentences, this may also be termed as the body of the paragraph. What are these supporting sentences? Supporting sentences support, explain the main idea, the topic sentence. This may include some information, details. What kind of details? Facts, examples, reasons, illustrations about the main topic which is given in your opening sentence. Ideally, five to seven sentences in a paragraph should be there. So students, be very careful. Aage se kabhi bhi aap paragraph leke dhyan rakhe. Minimum five sentences aapke ek paragraph mein hone chahiye. And one idea, just one idea in one paragraph. See, the way you make a wall, each and every brick linked, perfectly compact, connected to one another, isn't it? Similarly, when you are writing your supporting sentences, the ideas must not stray from the topic. Ideas should be absolutely focused. Whatever you are giving in the paragraph should be well related to one another, to the topic that you have taken up. Use different types of sentences. Add variety to your paragraph. Don't make it monotonous. See to it that your sentences are in a perfect logical order and sequence. And students, one more thing to remember. You should know what is 
more important and whatever is important you give that first so your sentences may be arranged in the order of importance then comes the closing statement this you may term as a clincher 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 is a term that tells you which finally sums up your argument in your essay also you have the concluding paragraph isn't it similarly when you are writing a paragraph you need to have a closing statement which finally sums up whatever you have given look at the screen students it sums up your paragraph's information it reminds the readers of the topic usually it is the last sentence it restates the main idea and it has got facts examples and details sometimes clinch your statement the final sentence and this sentence may reinforce an overall argument it may be a fact an event that settles the matter suppose you are writing an argumentative paragraph the final statement or the clincher is going to sum up it is going to bring it to a final argument this is it it resolves whatever questions or claims you have put forth earlier when you have the topic before you students you have to decide what am i going to write ask yourself this question what question am i going to answer in this paragraph how can i make a topic sentence what facts or ideas can i use to support my introductory sentence so once you remember these questions in your mind you will know how to go on with your paragraph writing how can i make this paragraph interesting do i need to put more facts on this topic are more illustrations required are there any examples to support my point to support my argument so that i can make it with greater clarity so that people are convinced they are persuaded to whatever i wish to say think about it three things that are going to help you to make a good paragraph unity coherence elaboration the topic is there before you be very careful when you decide the topic don't lose sight of your main idea as i said earlier don't be digress from the topic all the sentences that relate to the main idea if there is a sentence of topic this can create confusion so students because paragraph is limited use only the important details coherence see four parts of the table club together makes a perfect whole this is coherence if all the ideas in a paragraph they flow smoothly from one sentence to the next sentence you can say that your paragraph is a perfect coherent one smooth flow of ideas even from one paragraph to the other i will give you a few hints how to bring about this flow how to make the bridges between the sentences how the ideas should flow from one sentence to the other elaboration the topic is there before you the ideas are there in your mind how to elaborate on those ideas add details give examples provide an example that proves your point use contrast to show how your idea is different from something else you may add a factor too to support your main idea so these are the ways you can add variety to your paragraph you can make your paragraph a very interesting one the transition words yes transition the change how to go on from one one sentence in the paragraph to the other how to go on from one paragraph to the other for these you may use transition words and what are these words you can see the list for addition you can use words like also again as well as you may copy this down if you want 
if you are generalizing you may say as a rule as usual usually generally if you have to illustrate your point you may say for example in this case if some kind of exception is to be given you say, you can you may write aside from barring a few examples if you are restating then you may say in other words in short to put it briefly to put it differently if you are summarizing finally in your concluding sentence you may write after all in conclusion on the whole to sum up to summarize so these are a few examples of the transition words that you may use here is one more example for you to remember how to make or construct a good paragraph this is called the burger paragraph model this gives a clear structure how to write an organized paragraph see the burger is there before you the top bun is the topic sentence or the main idea and the bottom bun is the concluding sentence and in between students you have supporting sentences minimum three sentences as i said try your level best to make that burger model a very interesting one and how will you make your paragraph interesting add lots of details give facts give examples make it an interesting a note on the formality you have to be very careful your teachers have been telling you not to use slang words not to use sms language in your literary creative writing even when you are writing paragraphs certain kinds of expressions are not allowed for example contractions contractions you know when you shorten the word for example don't aren't write out your words in full do not are not you can read the list on the left these are the informal words which are not to be used in your paragraph don't doesn't aren't won't can't couldn't instead you can use the words which are acceptable do not does not are not were not cannot could not or will not these are more acceptable and not only for your paragraph students any kind of literary writing that you are doing you have to be careful not to use these contractions do not use any short forms a glance or a peep on the types of the paragraphs a narrative paragraph tells a story a persuasive paragraph tries to convince descriptive paragraph describes something explanatory gives information or explains let me take this up in detail narrative narrative which narrates tells a story a sequence of events it has a beginning middle and an end it narrates the primary topic and one main event is taken in such a paragraph if your essay is expository it explains gives information lists the facts directions and all this is set in a perfect logical order persuasive paragraph in a persuasive paragraph you may share your opinion you may try to convince the reader about certain point you may build an argument it requires collection of facts examples and details and in a persuasive paragraph just like you have a persuasive essay you have to accept a particular point of view and then you have to build your ideas to support that point of view to support your argument descriptive essay very easy descriptive paragraph just like in essay you describe certain things person object it needs verbs and adjectives to describe and you may use words that appeal to the five senses of touch smell sight sound and taste a reminder students the basic paragraph structure i'm sure it's clear to all of you you need to have three main parts the first part is the introduction which is called the topic sentence then you have the filling which are the facts the details 
the examples and finally the conclusion the topic sentence is the main idea the facts are the supporting details first take the important details which are called the major supporting details and then you have minor supporting details and this is finally closed by a closing sentence a closing sentence or the clincher statement as i said earlier restates the main idea the topic that you have taken up avoid the use of the same word in a paragraph see students sometimes if you are writing a paragraph on some technical thing the term is there the term may be used it may be repeated but do not use the same word in a paragraph it makes it boring less interesting monotonous so in order to add variety try to use some synonym of the word some substitution and do not mix tenses in your paragraph do not announce your topic i'm going to come up to the point because you have to expand the idea so do not say i am going to write about this topic do not tell your reader what you are going to discuss the first sentence should be so strong the topic sentence the thesis statement it is enough to tell your reader what you are going to write about so simply students state your opinion or your main idea never start your paragraph like this i will tell you about or this is how i feel about this topic or about this argument start straight away with your topical sentence expansion of ideas in your textbook you have already seen that your paragraph is linked with the expansion of ideas some kind of proverb muhavre lokoktiyan hoti hain jaise aapki hindi mein that is given to you it is opposite of your prose writing the topic is there and you have to expand it giving ideas illustrations etc so most important thing is understand the symbol of the words in the proverb the topic that is there before you for which you have been asked to expand the idea substitute the meaning in the idea or the proverb do not write the same words which are given in the topic decode the proverb so that you can understand so that the reader can understand how you have decoded i am going to give you a few examples how to do it give examples give illustrations look for similar proverbs or ideas in order to express your point in a better way sum up your paragraph writing so this is how you can do the expansion of ideas a few examples are there before you this is again from your textbook and i'm sure you have already done it so far all that glitters is not gold hindi mein kehte hain na har chamakne wali cheez sona nahi hoti how to explain this not everything that looks precious or true turns out to be so the proverb has been taken up from the play the merchant of venice written by william shakespeare all that glisters is not gold often have you heard that told the topic sentence for this particular proverb is given on the screen see the last one looks may be deceiving something shiny and pleasing to the eye may not in reality be what it seems see i'm sure you all have understood the proverb slow and steady wins the race not necessary that you have to agree with this proverb yes in this fast race anybody who is fast wins the race so it depends on you how you are going to express this proverb the race is not always to the swift it is the consistent effective effort that leads to success regularity punctuality and steadfastness brings success so these are a few examples a few topical sentences that i have given you how to begin your expansion of ideas when you have to write a paragraph you get questions on such proverbs work is worship yes many are the blessings of work all that humanity has achieved during the course of generation was a result of hard work over a long period of time you may start like this charity 
begins at home. Yes, people are highly charitable. They do so much for the society. But sometimes we ignore our close ones, our own family. So charity begins at home. Be generous to your family before helping others, before stepping out. Some more proverbs from you, from your book. God helps those who help themselves. Yes, God is going to help people who are ready to take up challenges, who are ready to help themselves, who don't totally do not rely on destiny or fate. Actions speak louder than words. It is better to do one act instead of speaking a thousand words. Every cloud has a silver lining. Yes, there is always something positive, even if you do not get success every time. Try to look at the brighter side of things. Rome was not built in a day. A great classical beautiful city. How is it possible to build it in a day? Everything which is important takes time, takes labor, takes patience. A stitch in time saves nine. The timely work that is done saves you from a lot of trouble. Yes? If you put the stitch at the right time, it saves you nine stitches. Sometimes the work may be irreparable if you keep delaying it, if you keep postponing it. A friend in need is a friend indeed. I don't think this proverb needs any explanation. Yes? Musibat ke samay jo dost kaam aaye, wahi sacha dost hai, wahi sacha mitra hai. Honesty is the best policy. Truth should be the principle of your life. The pen is mightier than the sword. What you say, what you write has more influence on people than the use of violence. Practice makes perfect. If you are weak in something, if you think that your self-confidence is lacking a bit, keep practicing, keep repeating, keep doing it over and over again. Gradually, you will lead, lead finally. You will reach that level of perfection. Fortune favors the bold. Destiny, success comes to people who are brave enough to face the challenges of life. Health is wealth. Where there is a will, there is a way. If you really want to do something, if you have a strong determination to do it, you will be successful. You will find a way. A rolling stone gathers no moss. This may be interpreted in two ways. In the positive way, if you keep moving, keep progressing, keep developing, there is no stagnation in your life. And it may also mean that a person who is always on the move sometimes has no roots. There is no responsibility. As you sow, so shall you reap. The kind of deeds done by you, they come back to you. Yes? Jaisa aap dusro ke saath vyavhar karenge, aapko waisa hi face karna hoga. So these are a few examples that I have given your students. You know how to expand the idea in a paragraph. I'm sure the concept of paragraph writing, the components of paragraph writing are very clear to all of you. In a nutshell, you have understood what is a paragraph, a series of sentences which are related to one another. You have understood how to construct a good and effective paragraph. You have to indent or skip a line. Pay attention to it, students. Quickly, I'm going to ask you a few questions on these. In terms of content, one central idea and one paragraph. The topic sentence or the thesis statement is the first sentence. The details are the supporting sentences in which you give examples, reasons to support your point. In terms of flow, make bridges. Use transition words. See to it that Sentences in the paragraph are connected to one another. There is a perfect link. Then it will be easy to read your paragraph, to understand your paragraph. No repetitions, no contractions, no slang language. So these are a few things. Once you remember them, you will be able to construct very good paragraphs. These are a few references. Handbook for academic authors, writing for academic success. 
writing academic English, learn English paragraph writing skills. Those of you who are friendly on computer may go on the sites. They give you practice also how to write good paragraphs, which are going to help you, especially for your preparation for the competitive exams. A few questions for you students. Let's come up to the first question. Paragraph is a series of sentences. Developing one topic, two topics, developing many topics. Yes, students, I would like to know the answers quickly. Yes, I'm sure paragraph is very clear to all of you. It is a series of sentences. Anybody would like to answer? Which is the right answer? A, B or C? Yes. I can see students from Chindwara, from Sagar, Betul. Anybody would like to answer? Yes, schedule. The one full class over here. Would you like to answer? Yes, come on. Please pass the mic to the student. I can see full class in schedule. Yes. Paragraph is a series of sentences developing. Yes. Ma'am, I am Yes. Ma'am, answer is A. Very good. Answer is A. May I know your name? Ma'am, Charlie Jagari. Very good. Congratulations. Yes. Paragraph is a series of sentences that develops one topic, one idea, one theme, one concept. Very good. Let's go on to the question number two. See the answer? Answer is A. A paragraph always has A, a beginning, B, a middle, C, an end, D, all of the above. Yes. Any other college would like to try? Yes, which college is answering? Nepal College. I am not able to. Baranpur, yes. Yes, what is the answer? D. D, very good. May I know your name? All of the above. Very good. What is your name? Yaram. Very good. Congratulations, Buranpur. A paragraph always has, just like an essay, it has a beginning. The beginning is your introductory sentence or the topical sentence or the thesis statement. Then you have a middle. Middle are supporting sentences. And finally, you have an end. End means the concluding sentence or the clincher. So the answer is D, all of the above. What are the basic elements of a good paragraph? Yes. What are the basic elements of a good paragraph? I told you the basic elements, students. Try. Chinwara, Vidisha, I can see sitting in Sihor, GDC Sihor. Anybody would like to try? What are the basic elements, the basic components? Yes. Burhanpur again, I can see one student with the mic. Would you like to answer? Indoor? Sihor, okay. Sihor, one girl is trying to answer the question. Yes, I can hear. Hello. Yes. What are the basic elements of a good Sihor, बोलिए आवाज आ रही है। Hello. Opening statement, middle statement, closing statement. Yes. Buranpur. Hmm. Opening statement, middle statement, closing statement. And the closing statement, yes. That that is called opening sentence is called the topic sentence. Very good. Supporting sentences. That is the middle. And conclusion is your. Final statement. Very good. See, it is very simple, students. The way you write an essay, 
exactly the same way you have to write the paragraph but in the paragraph you have to be very careful because it is not giving you much scope it is focused very concise and brief so you have to be very careful very good burhanpur topic sentence body sentences or supporting sentences followed by your conclusion why do you write a paragraph quickly so many examples are there i gave you there may be 100 reasons to write a paragraph just tell me a few examples why do you write a paragraph what is the purpose of writing a paragraph yes hoshangabad sihor shadol chinwara there are so many colleges full classes come on why do you write a paragraph kyun likhte hain aap paragraph yes one by one you can say it. okay i'll give you a hint to describe okay describe karne ke liye likhte hain paragraph to describe what else to answer suppose the topic is interrogative where you have to take a stand where you have to persuade where a question is raised then you have to answer it in your paragraph to inform to persuade to explain to convince to narrate to argue or to share your own ideas okay so these are just a few examples there may be hundreds of reasons why you write a paragraph so on the basis of the kind of topic that you have selected your paragraph is going to be written name the sentence that states the main idea theme or subject in a paragraph I have already given the answer to this question. Name the sentence. क्या कहते हैं उस sentence को, which gives the main idea, the main theme, the main subject, or the main paragraph. The moment you read that, it is clear to you what is there in your paragraph. Yes, Buranpur. Mike, pass करिए. Yes. Hello. Yes. The answer is topic. Uh, topic sentence. Very good. Yes, it is called the topical sentence. it is called the topic sentence it is also called the thesis statement or it may also be the first sentence that you write in your paragraph very good that is called the topic sentence very good name the sentence that restates the main idea or sums up the idea of your paragraph quickly we are running short of time students what is that sentence called which sums up your idea it comes in the last of the paragraph yes middle sentence which sentence middle sentence i'm not able to get kaun se college se bol rahe hain which college what is that sentence that restates the main idea it comes at the last of the paragraph yes hoshangabad the student is trying to answer please all yes closing statement closing sentence very good very good that's it it is called a closing sentence it is also called a clincher statement it finally sums up it finally puts a finish to whatever you have said in your sentence thank you students i'm sure paragraph writing is very clear to all of you happy navratri and happy ram navmi in advance thank you